Toxic relationships can be really damaging to our mental and emotional health, but do you know if you're in one? In this video, I'm going to show you five signs that will help you identify a toxic relationship. Hi, my name is Micheline Malouf and I'm a licensed therapist and I'm here to talk about something that's really important but often overlooked. These are the subtle signs of a toxic relationship. A lot of us are in them without even realizing it and they can do so much damage, not just emotionally but physically as well. So in this video, I'm going to show you the five signs that will help you identify whether or not you're in a toxic relationship and provide you with tips to help you cope or get out when you feel ready. So let's get started with some of the most commonly missed signs that point to a toxic or unhealthy relationship. Number one, you feel like you're always walking on eggshells. If you find it difficult to express your needs, your opinions, and your emotions, it might mean that you're in a toxic or unhealthy relationship. Although it can be challenging to express your needs and feelings, you shouldn't be scared to do so out of fear of how they might take it or how they might respond or react. It's healthy to consider the other person's feelings when having conversations and to be mindful of how you word things. And it's considered good practice to come from a place of I, such as saying something like, I feel frustrated when you leave your shoes by the door, or I feel hurt when you comment on my appearance. Instead of saying something like, you always leave your shoes by the door, or you're always so inconsiderate. But centering your ideas, opinions, and emotions out of fear of another person's reaction or retaliation is unhealthy. When you censor yourself, you're suppressing all of your feelings and you're putting the other person's comfort ahead of your own, which is a form of self-neglect, and this can harm your mental and physical health in the long run. Number two, you're constantly criticized or made to feel bad about yourself. So constructive criticism can be good and healthy for a relationship, but harsh criticism without empathy usually comes from a place of deep-rooted insecurity or dissatisfaction. Of course, there's a time and a place for constructive criticism, but if you're finding that the criticism is constant, not constructive, and not gentle, it could be a signal of emotional abuse. Here are a few examples of harsh or unhelpful criticism. Is something wrong with you? How could you forget to lock the door? You never think about me. How can you be so selfish? You're acting like a child. Grow up and take responsibility for your feelings. In the helpful and constructive ways, these would sound more like this. It frustrates me and it's a bit concerning that you keep forgetting to lock the door. Is there a way that I can help you remember? I feel lonely and rejected when you don't consider my opinion before making a decision that impacts both of us. Can we talk about this? I noticed that you've been really negative lately and it makes me feel uncertain of how to proceed. Would you like to talk about this so we can move forward? Do you notice the tone difference in these responses? One of them can make you get defensive and feel a lot of shame, while the other one can be constructive and get you to a resolution with your partner. The third red flag is that they're never there for you when you need them. Healthy relationships are balanced. We can't expect someone to only be there for us when we're happy and easy to be with. You should be able to feel safe enough emotionally to come to your partner when you're feeling down and expect support. It's also also good to expect your partner to be understanding and caring when your mental health declines and you're not able to be your best self. I'm not saying that they will be there for you 100% of the time and show up every single time. Relationships are certainly never 50-50, but there should be a good balance between supporting each other. Healthy relationships fluctuate between needing to be supported and needing to be the supportive partner. Sometimes it's 80-20, sometimes it's 50-50, and sometimes it's 100-0. If you can't depend on your partner to be there for you, then it's a good indication that you're in an unhealthy dynamic. Red flag number four, you don't have time for yourself because you're always with your partner. One of the biggest red flags in toxic relationships is that they isolate you from your family, friends, and hobbies. Abusive and toxic partners feel threatened when you don't spend all of your time and attention on them due to their deep-rooted insecurities within themselves. They may see any attempt at your happiness outside of the relationship as threatening. Some abusive partners do this by constantly planning things with you when they know that you have plans or things coming up, causing fights before events to discourage you from going, or completely ignoring you while you're out to create tension and anxiety when you're with your friends. This makes it really hard for you to enjoy yourself when you're out, discouraging you from wanting to leave or do anything without them anymore. On the other hand, they can become very controlling and sometimes even aggressive and manipulative to discourage 
discourage you from engaging much with the outside world. Many emotional abuse victims report losing many, if not all, of their connections, their hobbies, and sometimes even their work. Your partner should encourage you and support your hobbies, friendships, and career. And finally, the most subtle red flag is that you don't feel happy or fulfilled in your relationship. Sometimes there aren't these big signs that the relationship is unhealthy or toxic. Sometimes your partner isn't abusive. Sometimes you're with a good person, but you don't feel fulfilled or happy. It could be a compatibility issue, or maybe you've outgrown the relationship or completely lost connection. If the relationship is not physically or emotionally abusive, you can try to work it out and try to regain some of that spark and try to find commonalities and see if it helps. But if it doesn't, then you staying in a situation that you don't feel fulfilled can become so toxic to your physical and mental health. So if you feel like you're in a toxic relationship, here are some tips to help you. Number one, write down the facts. Keep a journal of everything that's happening. You can even make recordings if you feel safe enough to do so. This will come in especially handy if your partner gaslights you. Writing things down helps you become more aware and more clear about what's happening, how often it's happening, and for how long. Number two, find a trusted, safe person or people and tell them what's going on. This can be helpful for so many reasons. For example, you will have someone to vent to you so that you don't feel isolated. This friend can also help you see things more clearly. Sometimes when we're in a toxic relationship, our sense of identity disappears and we lose trust in ourselves. So having a friend validate our experience and support us can help us rebuild that faith within ourselves and others. And finally, this person can serve as a part of your breakup plan for if and when you choose to leave the relationship. Having someone ready to be there for you, to help you through tough times, and to help you move out if necessary can take so much pressure off and help you feel less alone and more likely to stick with your escape plan. Tip number three, build up your resources and start finding yourself again. Slowly reintroduce yourself to things that you love. Start communicating with your friends and family more often. Get professional help if possible. Learn healthy communication skills and emotion processing. Get some psychoeducation about abusive relationships and how they impact you and learn to set boundaries. And finally, have fun. Join groups, activities, events that you love to help you get your identity back. And my last tip is that if you or someone you know is in an abusive relationship, please check the resources in the description box below and try to get help or get them help as soon as possible. I hope that you got something out of this video. I hope that the tips were helpful. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comment box below and let me know what other questions do you have about abusive relationships? Are there any red flags that I missed that you'd like to mention? You never know who you could be helping. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.